Quest Building, and you're watching my weekly vlog for my brand story. As always, I'm here to help you build a truly authentic business and brand that will connect. Today, I was inspired by a podcast that I heard, and it then encouraged me to start this, this to do this vlog and work out, you know, how you can get out of this tricky situation. The trough of sorrow. <gasps> Have we been there before? Have you heard of it? I can't tell you. I think I've had a big trough, a couple of small troughs but a really big trough a while back. The trough of sorrow, I'm here to help you with that and tell you how you can get out of that in three easy steps. We'll at least make the changes in three easy steps. The trough of sorrow, for those of you playing outside that haven't, play, haven't heard this before, it's for most, if not all startups, come to this point, this fork in the road, this trough of sorrow. And it is when you're in the life cycle of your business, in the starting beginning, where you're doing all of this work and you know that what you offer is amazing, you've done the research, your target market get, will, the target market want it, but you're not connecting. You're not able to get in front of those. You're not able to make it dynamite, the what you want. And you're just at this point where you just feel like you've given it all and you don't know what to do. You know, I've been there before and I'm actually just I'm transitioning out of that in the fact that I'm like, oh, how do I, I know that I offer this amazing product, but I'm just not getting in front of the right people. I'll tell you a bit about that later, but let me go back to what I was listening. It's the, I was into this post podcast, you probably heard of it. It's how I built this by Guy Raz and he was interviewing the founder or one of the founders of Airbnb, Joe Gebbia. Really great guy, really interesting story, and not what you would have thought. You know, you would have, I mean, I think with Airbnb, just all, all of a sudden it was there and it was amazing and we're all, we're all adopting and we're all grabbing onto it. But for him, it took him a while. And there were so many starts and stops and starts and stops. And he just thought to at one point, I'm just giving up. Chuff of sorrow, but he didn't. He didn't give up. You know, it came about his idea, which was so interesting. There was actually his idea about having to pay the rent is how he came up with Airbnb. It was a big conference that was happening in his town and there were no hotels and they're all expensive. And I remember this as well, my, having this in my own town. Whenever something happens, everything is expensive and sold out. And he had these rooms and he had to pay rent. He's like, why don't I sublease my, sublease my room? People need it. And he posted it on and he got people to come and stay. He had three guests and he said it was absolutely amazing and it was a great experience. He goes, how do I make this a platform? So fast forward today and that's how we have Airbnb. But in the middle, there were these trials and tribulations. You know, he had this great idea and he's like, all right, I'm gonna go pitch it to all these investors. And he said, you know, you can imagine investors, I want to let people into my own home, let them sleep with, in my room next to me and pay. And investors are like, you know, this is a different world back then. People didn't want their, their space was their own space and they were never gonna let it open to strangers. And it was really hard. And, and they came to so many walls because nobody wanted to support them in their venture, which they knew. They knew that the people wanted it, but they just couldn't connect and they couldn't get the funding. He then said he, he came about this called the Visa Fund. It was a, the Visa um, Grant and it was him getting a whole lot of Visa and MasterCards and paying to make this happen, but still not getting the traction, still not getting there. He's like, I need more money because I need to invest more in the business. So took a step back, you know, almost ready to shut the doors. And then he, then there was another conference in town, same sort of thing. He said, how am I going, they had a big conference and how are they gonna get this PR? How are they gonna make a statement? How are they going to get Airbnb in front of people's minds when booking? I know, I'll create Obama O's, cereal. Yeah, you heard me, cereal. They created cereal. When would you ever connect it? But you know, people have cereal, air, bed and breakfast. That's what it came about, a bed and breakfast in the morning, a bed at night, breakfast, cereal. You see the connection? 
they put the last of their money into this to actually create these Obama O's and had the huge PR around it. And they got momentum, they got people talking, they got awareness. Okay, the awareness was there, but they just were not hitting the targets. They still weren't booking. And he was racking his brain. He's like, how do I make this happen? He was like, I'm going to get this connection. I believe in my product and I believe in my business. And he kept pushing. And so what he did is he focused and he went to, and he he went to these people. He went up to New York, spent last and last of his money. And he met the people that were actually using it renting it there and and hiring and he went straight to the source and he said to them what is it that you like about it what can be done better what can i do he needed to find out the gap he wanted to find out what was the gap he needed the enlightened empathy is what he called it he needed to get enlightened by his early adopters what are they the early adopters what were they liking or they not liking what could be done better getting inside of it because they're already on there but how could he make grow it more and he said there was a resound like reoccurring thing the quite like the quality of the platform just wasn't good enough it wasn't easy enough it wasn't straightforward enough so you know he said the quality of the photos and he looked at the photos you know he said the photos aren't great it's not encouraging and you know we still to this day i will flip past an airbnb um house that doesn't have beautiful photos so he thought i'm going to invest in a photographer and a designer, and I'm gonna fix this platform. I'm gonna get better photos, I'm gonna upload them on these special homes and see what happens. I bet you guess what's right. The products that he invested in for the photos and got the better to connecting with the platform, made the platform a lot more user friendly and better. He invested in that design, he invested in the images. Those houses and those apartments skyrocketed. They were out rented tenfold to all the ones around them. So that was his aha moment. He goes, okay, I now need to set a precedent for all Airbnb people. They need to look like this. It needs to be stylized. It needs to be X, Y, and Z. And I think we all sort of have looked at it as a consumer. Think of your consumer, how do you use Airbnb? The beautiful places get the bookings. And there is a, actually a consistent, there is a consistency on Airbnb now of beautiful images. That was an insight that he had. He switched that, he invested, he backed not only anything, he moved himself from that trough of sorrow and he invested and he re-kept pushing and he involved it. Now, I'm not talking about pushing uphill, pushing shit uphill. I'm talking about evolving and learning and his enlightened empathy. What was it? Enlightened empathy. Finding that gap and connecting the gap of the service to the end user and making it work. And he did that and he nailed it. And that is why we see Airbnb growing. And there are more Airbnbs rooms than hotel rooms now in this world. Can you believe that? That's insane. And that's all about getting to that lowest point and having nothing else to lose but going out there and making a difference and changing it. Have you been there? I have to admit, I have been there. My product, my brand pack, you know, it, I believed in it and I knew it was right. It was, a, it was just a little while ago and I was like, it's not connecting. I'm not getting in front of the right people. How do I do this? How do I get in front of the right people? So then I thought to myself, how am I going to do this? Okay, I know that it's right. I need to get in front of people that understand branding. I want to self-learn. I want to invest in their business. So I then invested in a, a social media strategist. I couldn't do it. And I invested my last, you know, all my money in getting this better. And it's doing me, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how it's pivoted my business. And anything, it's encouraged me more to work harder. And it's given me that insight that what I'm doing is right. And you know, I am on the right track. I just need, needed those tools to get me there. And it, I'm sure it's probably the same for you. So has this happened to you? You know, is this something that, you know, you feel the same way? You're like, Claire, I'm in this trough of sorrow and I'm drowning in it. This trough's getting bigger and I'm just not getting control. You know, you can get control. We've all been there and just seeing someone like Joe from Airbnb, like he was there and he just kept going. The difference is the determination to keep going. So three steps to help you get out of this trough of sorrow. The first is identify what the problem is. Identify what you think is a disconnect yourself. You know, what, why are you not connecting? What is the reason that your product or service is not working and you believe in it and you know that it is right? You then go, 
select your top three, five handful of clients and ask them, what do you think could be done better? How could I, could it be streamlined? Is it this interface? Is it the product not delivering on something that you think needed? Get some insights. Get that enlightened empathy. Get the people that already believe in your business because they're your target market and how they could ask, they could give you the advice to make it bigger. And don't feel like you can't because people always want to help businesses be better and they want your product to be better as well because they're already tribe members. Listen to them and then bridge the gap. Bridge the gap, that's your third point. So then your third point is bridge the gap. Pivot your business so you can then make the change. So you can then connect with these other people. You've already got a little handful, Get you want more of these people, so connect with them. So find a way to connect. So here we go, step one, identify what you think is not working and why, what's not working, what's your disconnect. Two, contact a handful of your clients, your tribe members that are already your target market and ask them what they could be done better and how, what it's like through their eyes. See it from their eyes because from your eyes, it's too emotional, it's too one-sided. You need to see from their eyes from a subjective, sorry, objective, not subjective, objective point of view on how things could be done better invest then number three pivot change bridge the gap and make the change invest your last invest find the money on how you can make it if you're going to do it if you believe in it put all your efforts into making this happen identify the problem find out what the issues are how you can bridge the gap and then bridge the gap and pivot your business to a more successful profitable way I mean, that's what we're all here for. We're all here to follow our, our business dream and be successful. You know, be the business and the brand that you want to be and be in front of the right people. That was my issue, not being in front of the right people. And ultimately, back yourself. Joe backed himself. He backed himself so well and he did not let go. Because you know what? Business is hard, otherwise everyone will be doing it. So don't you worry about what everyone else is doing. And yes, it is hard. As I said, if it wasn't, everyone would be doing it and you wouldn't want it so much. You wouldn't want the success. If you know what you've got is right and you believe in the product and the business, invest in it, get in front of the right people and then target correctly so then you can be a profitable business. And get out of the trap of sorrow. Make it enlightened empathy. That's a lovely word. I love what he said that. Getting that insight from your target market, it's great. And then it gives you the energy to then keep going. And also, it's just really nice to hear what works and what doesn't work, and you should be doing that anyway. And that's my tip for this week. Trough of sorrow, get out of it. If you do not, I really encourage you to listen to how I built this. It's really cool. Guy is great at getting other business stories like Airbnb and telling you and showing you how they've been there. These successful businesses have been there and how they can give you tips and tricks on how you can maybe make it better, make it more successful. And also it's really nice to hear that businesses that are successful now have been at the trap of sorrow and have been at that point where they're like, why am I, why am I here? But push through and then back themselves to be a successful business that they are today. So if you did one, one thing today, well, you should do those three tips on how you can get out of the trap of sorrow. But one more, if you're going to do yourself a favor, start following how I built this really, really interesting and informative podcast. Well, I'm Claire Spaldy, and thank you for watching my weekly vlog. If you like this video, please subscribe and share with friends, share the love. You know, I love all about sharing love and, you know, just getting the message out there on how to build businesses and brands. If you want to know more about my brand pack, because that's also very important, get over to my website on mybrandstory.me and find out how you can sign up for the free 20 point branding checklist to see where your brand sits. How do I sign off? As always, you know, I love to say this, stay true to your business and your journey. Like this is actually really quite important now. Stay true to your journey and your brand story because what you have to offer, nobody does. Just find that insight to back it and pivot and make it more successful. I'm Chris Golding from My Brand Story. 